Today is about peace, the peace on earth from God Almighty. And um, this is coming from Sister Gloria Copeland in December's Believer's Voice of Victory magazine. It struck such a chord with me that I had to share it today. And so let me just read the first point here. To the degree you want, you walk in love of in the love of God. So let me just remind you, the love of God is very different than love, the, even the highest degree of love you can have with your heart and mind. Without God Almighty and the Word of God, it is not agape love. As much as you try, because God's love is far different than natural love. So to the degree we walk in the love of God, loving God and loving others. That's how much we can enjoy peace. All right, so in this day and time, peace is a precious commodity. I'm not even talking about between nations and countries. This is between family, siblings, school, work, church, etc. Every day, our eyes and ears and hearts can be bombarded by the media with glaring headlines of doom and gloom, Visions of turmoil, anything but peace. People everywhere are experiencing all kinds of pressure, persecution, stress, and people everywhere have a choice to make. This is the good news. We have a choice to make to either receive turmoil, turmoil into their hearts or to resist this fear and refuse to allow it to chip away at our peace. So let me give you some scriptures. Um, for the peace, and I'm going to go through this article so you can have this for future, especially around the holy days, holidays. So I'm sure you're going to choose, we're all going to choose to resist fear and live in peace regardless of what's happening, because if we don't, it's just turmoil and stress. The most effective way that we do that is to go to God and his word. Like I said in the beginning, there's a lot of good-hearted people who think they have agape love and think they're loving but if it's not founded on the word of Almighty God, it's going to be hollow, it's going to be shallow, and it's not going to be long-term. So God's word has the answer to everything. A key scripture for being established in peace is found in Isaiah 26, 3. It says, God will keep us in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on him because he trusts in, because we trust in him. Peace comes in comes as a result of trusting God. It's not willpower. It's not a mental game. You can choose with your mind to get in the word, but peace is from the heart. It's from God's word. So peace comes as a result of trusting God, operating in faith, keeping our mind on his word, and acting on his word. This is a, might be a little dry, but I want to give the points of peace because it's the word of God that is going to change us. So, um, the kind of peace, God's kind of peace, is living in a state of rest. My dad's been studying a lot of um, not only entering into the place of rest, but remaining in God's place of rest. It is finished. It is done. If we, if we truly believe the gospel of Jesus where he said it is finished, then we must labor to enter into his rest. So living in a state of rest, quietness, and calmness is what God's peace is. It is the absence of strife. We talked about strife last week. It's a place of tranquility. It generally denotes perfect well-being, and perfect in the, in the Bible, um, King James is mature. It includes harmonious relationships between God and mankind and between mankind, nations of all over, and families. Peace isn't determined by the absence of trouble. Peace is not determined by circumstances or the absence of circumstances, but rather by the presence of God. So look right here. Peace is determined by the presence of God. If you're in strife and turmoil and angst and you feel like life is so hard, it's not because of the circumstances. That's what everyone in the natural is going to point to. The truth of the matter is it's because we, you, me, we are not grounded in the word of God because the you know, my dad and I used to talk about this all the time, and I don't mention my mom because she's been living in peace and faith for a long time. We tried to do it our own way, and it was hard, but he used to say, well, I'm going to, after I finish this business or succeed in this endeavor, then I'll have peace. Then I'll be happy. And now he's like, there's no way. The only way to be happy is the presence of God. 
And I don't know who Selam, I don't know what Salem is, but if it's something not of God, I'm going to delete if it gets a little too much. Thank you. So love, joy, and peace issue out of your spirit as a result of fellowship with God. To the degree you walk in the love of God, loving God and loving others, that's how much we can enjoy peace, just like we said in the beginning. Every fruit of the spirit depends on walking in love. It's impossible to walk in strife, unforgiveness, hatred, ill will, and have peace at the same time. You can have peace. If you can have peace with God, you can have peace in every other relationship in your life. And I will prove, I, I can say by experience this week and last, that is the very honest truth. And it's been going... I've been living this for a while and I've made mistakes. I ask for forgiveness and keep moving. But the point is, it's not other people or circumstances or life's challenges that take away my peace. What takes away the peace is not staying in the presence of God. And so that's the point. Um, we just talked about that. So the word peace means to bind together that which has been separated. So anyone that's trying to have strife, Usually, it's try, they're trying to divide and put a wedge between insecurity, fear, whatever, and there is no peace and harmony in that. You can tell when someone's really developed in counseling and um, helping people because the number one play will be how can we get a solution to bring back together? How can we uh, both sides work together rather than, well, you need to do all this, you need to do all this and keep dividing it's it's about bringing together under the banner of God Almighty through Jesus Christ. It cannot be done without God. It would be shallow if it is. So our peace comes from being joined to God. Jesus, the Prince of Peace, is our peace. You can go to Ephesians 2.14. When we accept him, Jesus, as our Lord and Savior, we are in covenant with God, and it's a covenant of peace. The message of salvation is also called the gospel of peace. So one thing that when I mentor people, I, you know, they say they've been in the word, they love Jesus, they've been around the word, church, whatever, they're a long, long time. Well, I can tell if they're in the word of God or have a thriving relationship with God, if they're in a certain amount of peace. I'm not talking about a situation that just happened, but in general, a constant amount of peace. Because when we understand the gospel of Jesus Christ, we are absolutely, it's not our deal. We roll it over and we let him take care of everything. And we have to labor to do that by staying in the word of God. So um, let's go on to the next point here. Jesus made the way for us to experience wholeness, soundness. When he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our guilt and iniquities. The chastisement needful to obtain our peace and well-being was upon him. And with the stripes that wounded Jesus, we are healed and made whole. That's what you'll see right here in Isaiah 53, 5. It's great to know that Jesus bore all the bad things that could steal our peace. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. But just like the other fruit of the Spirit, we, you and I, have to yield to peace in order for it to manifest in our lives. And we must choose not to yield to anxiety and fear. It takes a conscious commitment to be obedient to God's word and walk in the fruit of the spirit. In John 14, 27, Jesus comforts us with these words. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth. The world system is selfish, confusion, and competition. One of my dearest friends, Esther, told me today, she goes, when we say, I love you, I love you more, I love you most, the spirit of God rose up in her and, and said, uh, love is not competition. We both just had the biggest aha moment. We don't need to say love you more, love you best, love you most. We, we thought we were doing well by being a blessing. But what rose up in her is that more, better, best, all, all that is competition. And you know who the author of competition is? Satan. He wanted to be number one. And so God kicked him out. And it's not, it's not the actual word, love you more, love you most. It's, it's, the, it's this, the sentiment behind it. And even when I was saying I love you more, I was wanting to have the love of agape, agape love of God to be shed abroad on people. And yet, 
I am not going to be in competition. The only time there's competition for me is if it's in sports and I'm playing a game for that moment of the game, but it's not about uh, putting self over anybody else. So glory to God on high. So peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, giveth I unto you. Then he added, let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. So not only are we supposed to allow the peace of God to come upon us, we are to consistently not allow the angst, the fear, the trouble, the circumstances around us to stay in our mind. We have a choice. We have a decision. In um, 2 Corinthians 10.5, it says, bring every thought into the obedience of Christ. What that means is every thought that comes to your mind must go through a filter. You can either um, take that thought and keep it and by talking about whatever's going on, or you can say, that's not my thought. That's not line. That doesn't line up with the word of God. It doesn't mean you deny circumstances. We just deny their right to exist. We deny the word of God. And because of Jesus Christ, we deny uh, the world system of fear, selfishness, condemnation, competition to control us. And it should all, agape love is selfless. Agape love is finding the good in others doing good unto others, even if it means that we stay in the background. And that's what this ministry is about. King Worldwide Ministries is about God in you, God in me, God living through us to help other people. So have a great um, night, great weekend, and we'll see you on Monday with God's Way of Success.